What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the next stimulus package, the American Families Plan, as well as the next infrastructure package known as the American Jobs Plan, as well as what is going on in the world today, and a fourth stimulus check update. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new update videos. We not only cover the fourth stimulus check update, but everything going on in Washington, D.C., the negotiations going on over these next two packages, which could ultimately lead to about 15 or 20 different items that they are currently negotiating on uh, to be in this next stimulus package, including a forced stimulus check, monthly recurring stimulus checks possibly, a social security raise. There's three different plans to raise social security. I just did a recent video covering uh, President Joe Biden's actual plan to raise social security as well, as well as raising Medicare to include several different provisions like hearing dental, vision, and hearing aids, all completely for free, no additional cost, and to lower the Medicare eligibility age to age 60 or age 55. They also want to include two years of free preschool and two years of free community college in this next package, which um, would be an absolute game changer if two years of free college was free for basically all Americans as long as you make below an income threshold, which will likely be similar to the third stimulus check which they say about 85 to 88 percent of people do fall below those income thresholds of the third stimulus check. So that would mean that you would be able to go to college, go back to college, go to college for the first time, adults, teenagers, anybody, right? Uh, that would be an absolute game changer, and that could be included in this next package. In addition to that, there are monthly stimulus checks that are going to start going out on July 15th. This is a provision passed from the third stimulus check package known as the child tax credits. Um, they were increased from the third stimulus check package uh, to $3,000 for children under, or I'm sorry, $3,000 for children ages 6 through 17 and $3,600 for children under the age of 6. And the IRS is going to start sending out Stimulus checks to pay for this or um, child tax credit checks, whatever you want to call it, this is a provision from the third stimulus check package. So this did come out of the stimulus provisions. Uh, $250 per month for the rest of the year, starting on July 15th for children ages 6 through 17, and $300 per month for children under the age of 6. Let me know if you just received a letter from the IRS. They're sending this out to about 36 million families right now to say that they are going to be sending out these monthly stimulus checks uh, on July 15th. The IRS is opening up, opening up a website or a portal where you can log in and give them any additional information you might need or to change your information for uh, to receiving these stimulus checks. One of the big provisions uh, that could be in this next package is the Democrats want to extend this child tax credit, these monthly checks, to continue going on until 2025. Um, currently, they're only passed for 2021. However, we kind of need the Democrats and the Republicans to uh, agree. It would be better for the Democrats and the Republicans to pass the next physical infrastructure package that they're negotiating on right now um, to come to a bipartisan agreement and get President Biden on board as well and pass that through the next uh, the next infrastructure package. However, it seems like the Democrats and the Republicans uh, don't like to agree on almost anything nowadays. In fact, here's the Republicans right now oversuing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I am Representative Andrew Clyde from Georgia 9, and I am pleased to be joined by Representative Louis Gohmert from Texas 1. And our counsel, former Deputy Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Ken Cuccinelli. In bringing suit before the United States District Court for the District of Columbia to challenge Speaker Pelosi's unconstitutional and partisan rule, House Resolution 73. This rule is used to intimidate and fine only Republican members of the House of Representatives. Speaker Pelosi continues to play political games rather than engaging in genuine leadership to help solve the problems of the American people. And our lawsuit marks the beginning of the end of just one aspect of her authoritarian conduct. House Resolution 73, passed solely by Democrats without a single Republican vote, unlawfully detains members from engaging in their duties to those they represent, in clear violation of Article 1, Section 5, and Article 1, Section 6 of the Constitution and seeks to fine Republicans in violation of the 27th Amendment. 
It is clear to me that the intent of the Speaker is to gain improper influence over the actions of the minority Republican Party and to further Speaker Pelosi's false political narrative that, and I quote, the enemy is within the House of Representatives. House Resolution 73 is a failure of logic built upon a foundation of Democrat lies that say Republican members and their voters are dangerous domestic terrorists. In fact, the acting chief of the U.S. Capitol Police, Yogananda Pittman, reported to House Republican conference members in a security briefing on February the 24th that there existed no known intelligence from any source that any member of Congress was a threat to any other member, thereby revealing that the use of magnetometers as a condition of access to the House floor was truly political grandstanding by the Speaker and a clear violation of the Constitution. Now, to be clear, this is Republicans are going to be suing or have actually started it. They're suing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the leader of the Democrats from the House of Representatives, for putting metal detectors at the beginning of entering the House of Representatives. And uh, anybody that doesn't go through the metal detector has to pay a fine. So if you're, you, you know, you're walking into a building, there's a metal detector there. Um, there's Republicans that don't want to go through the metal detector and um, they go around it and they get a fine for doing that. And, and they kind of know about this. It's not like it's a secret and they, yet they do it anyways. And uh, Republicans are going to be suing Nancy Pelosi over this uh, because they don't want to go through a metal detector. So um, let me know your thoughts on this, especially if you're a Republican. This Again, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. But this is one of those things that, um, again, we just had the Capitol, you know, insurrection and, and, the, and the riots there. Uh, I What's the what's the problem with having a metal detector? You know, you walk through it. I mean, you do that at an airport. You do that at a lot of police stations. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong here, uh, but wouldn't you rather not have somebody um, have things on them they're not supposed to when they're in the U.S. House of Representatives? Uh, we know they can have some pretty heated arguments in there, so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. In addition to this, Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell signals that the Republicans would block the any, any President Biden's Supreme Court picks in 2024, the year of the next election, if they can. As you can see here, Republicans, if they win back control of the upper chamber, the Senate, wouldn't advance a Supreme Court nominee if a vacancy occurred in 2024, the year of the next presidential election. Mitch McConnell says, quote, I think it's highly unlikely. In fact, no, I don't think either party, if it were different from the president, would confirm a Supreme Court nominee in the middle of an election. Now, this kind of goes back with the tit for tat Republicans versus Democrats. We've seen Mitch McConnell block um, Merrick Garland, a Supreme Court nominee, back in the last year of um, President Obama's term. Uh, he actually didn't, um, he blocked the Supreme Court nominee for nine months. So President Obama had nine months left in his presidency. And um, Mitch McConnell blocked it because um, the leader of the Senate pretty much has control over that. You need 50, 51 votes to pass a Supreme Court nominee in the Senate. OK, well, Mitch McConnell was leader of the Senate there and he said, nope, I'm not going to let a vote happen. I'm going to send it to my graveyard uh, for the last nine months of President Obama's presidency. However, we've seen here just in 2020, uh, about one month before President um Trump went up for re-election before the November re-elections. Uh, one month left uh, before the elections, they did push through their own Republican Supreme Court in the last year of a presidency, uh, just one month before the November election. So this just kind of goes to show you that um, I see Republicans saying Democrats are just going to cram this through because they have the power. Republicans are have and pretty much done the same thing. And it, it's kind of crazy that it seems like these parties will never get along. And when one party has control over the other, they're just going to cram as much through or get whatever they can done uh, to suit their agenda. And we've now seen this from both Republicans and Democrats. The Michigan Democrats Twitter account says 
The Biden administration's American Rescue Plan, the third stimulus check package, is delivering an additional $95 in food assistance to Michiganders this month through the additional SNAP uh, and WIC programs that are passed from the third stimulus check package. They say, don't forget, not a single congressional Republican voted to help Americans put food on the table, meaning that not a single Republican voted yes on the third stimulus check package. Pramila Jayapal, who is the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus and also the co-author for one of the two main monthly stimulus check uh, bills, this particular bill has been introduced into the U.S. House of Representatives by uh, leader Democrat um, Jayapal and Democratic Representative Rashida Tlaib to introduce a $2,000 one-time stimulus check followed then by $1,000 monthly recurring payments that would go until one year after the pandemic is over to help our country and families recover. Again, a one-time $2,000 stimulus check, then followed by at least 12 months of $1,000 monthly recurring payments. Again, because even when the virus is gone, our country and families are going to need recover and is likely going to take several years like it did back in 2008 and 2009. Pramila Jayapal says most Republicans won't vote for our infrastructure package, no matter how much they water it down. We're wasting our time continuing to negotiate. Let's do what working families need right now and go big, bold, and on our own to deliver. And there has been a deal made at least between their um, five Democrats and five Republicans in the Senate, but it is a group of moderate Democrats and moderate uh, uh, Republicans that are kind of the swing votes when it comes to this, especially Senator Joe Manchin, Democratic representative from West Virginia. They have come to a deal amongst themselves, which would cost about $1 trillion, although there are some... Um, some information that says it might go as high as $1.2 trillion. And the key here is, as you can see here, while the senators try to win support from their bipartisan plan, Democrats are taking initial steps to pass an infrastructure package bill on their own. And this mimics what Senator Bernie Sanders has, has said about him and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, that they are currently negotiating, or I shouldn't say negotiating, they're currently working on a um, combination of the bills to put the infrastructure package and the next stimulus package, the American Jobs Plan and the American Families Plan, to put them back together as one plan known as the Build Back Better Plan. Uh, underneath President Biden's um, yeah, kind of introduced this plan to put them back together and pass them as one package through the reconciliation process, which is the process of how the Democrats passed the third stimulus check package without a single Republican vote, needing only 50 or 51 votes in the Senate. Remember, the Senate is tied 50-50, and um, you need 50 Democratic votes to pass a reconciliation process in this particular instance. Then it's a 50-50 tie, 50 yeses from the Republicans, or I'm sorry, 50 yeses from the Democrats. Boy, if only we could get 50 yeses from the Republicans. We'd be passing all sorts of stimulus packages. Uh, but yeah, we had 50 Democratic uh, senators vote yes, 50 Republican senators vote no, and then the tiebreaker vote goes to the vice president, Kamala Harris, for the tie-breaking 51st vote, okay? You can only do that a certain amount of times with the reconciliation process, and in about three and a half months, starts the new fiscal year, 2022, where the Democrats get a whole nother set of uh, reconciliation cards that they can pass for the next year. However, the midterm elections in 2022 will determine really how long the Democrats will stay in power. And that's why I say uh, that the Democrats really need to get all their um, stimulus priorities passed before the next election, like Social Security raises, Medicare raises, Medicare expansion, four stimulus checks, a possible fifth stimulus check has been talked about down the road if they go the single stimulus check route or they go the monthly stimulus check route like uh, Democratic Representative Pramila Jayapal, who is the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, which is about 100 different Democrats in the House of Representatives alone, have these bills for monthly stimulus checks so they don't have to pass them one at a time. But when the midterm election comes, if they lose even a single vote in the Senate or even just a couple votes in the House, they could lose control of either one of them. If the Democrats lose control of either one of them, they won't have the trifecta of controlling the House, the Senate, and the presidency, and they will no longer be able to pass bills on their own. They will have to pass them with bipartisan support 
like they're trying to do right now with this infrastructure package deal, which I think at this point is probably a 50-50 chance whether or not they're going to pass it um, with infrastructure, which would be easier. It would make both the Republicans and the Democrats happy, and uh, it would also be faster. They get that done, although it will be a smaller infrastructure package. Remember, Republicans tend to, on a lot of these uh, large stimulus packages or this infrastructure package bill, only want to spend around $1 trillion. They kind of draw the line in the sand. Anything over a trillion dollars and you start to lose Republican votes very, very quickly. Remember, the Democratic um, President Biden's infrastructure package initially started off at $2.3 trillion. So coming down from 2.3 all the way down to a mil, uh, a trillion or 1.2 trillion will be half or less than half of what they initially started at. So the real question is, is will President Biden go for one of these infrastructure packages? There's two of them. There's this bill, um, that small group from the Senate. There's also another group, the Problem Solvers Caucus, which is a larger bipartisan group that is currently working on their own infrastructure package as well that is expected to be between $1.2 and $1.4 trillion. Now, that'd probably be a little bit more um, good for President Biden's point of view. However, Senator Joe Manchin, who's the key swing vote for the Democrats in the uh, in the Senate for a Democratic senator from West Virginia, he's on board with this uh, other group of senators who have kind of negotiated their own deal. So um, he could go along with this other deal, but right now he's part of this other group here. So if Biden just goes along with this particular deal with this other group from, you know, five Republicans, five Democrats, if Biden supports that, they'll probably get enough votes from both Republicans and Democrats to pass this bill. They could have that done this week out of the way. It will create millions of jobs. It'll be really good for our country. Both Republicans and Democrats will support it. And then they can move on to the next stimulus package, the American Families Plan, which has, again, as I said, about 15 or 20 different stimulus provisions. However, there's like, a, in my opinion, a 95 to 99% chance that the uh, they, we won't get any Republican votes for it, and, and that's only because history. I mean, the third stimulus check package, which was passed at the end of March, almost April, um, not a single Republican voted yes on that. So uh, if we didn't see a single Republican vote yes on the third stimulus check package, you let me know. Do you think we'll see a single Republican vote yes on the fourth stimulus check package, the American Families Plan, where they want to increase these child tax credits? These monthly checks for children, they want to extend them till 2025. They want to have this forced stimulus check or even a monthly recurring forced stimulus check. I think that worst case scenario, we will see a forced stimulus check in this next package, uh, the, the American Families Plan, whether they combine that or not. Um, I don't think it'll be in the infrastructure package plan, even though there's some Democrats calling for it, uh, if they get Republican support and pass it on their own. But if they combine them, well, then, you know, they're pretty much one bill. And I think that the worst case scenario, we'll see a forced stimulus check. Best case scenario, we might see these monthly stimulus checks separate from the child tax credit monthly checks. Those checks are already passed. Those were passed from the third stimulus check package. Again, they're starting on July 15th, $250 to $300 per month starting on July 15th. Um, but they want to extend that until 2025, so four more years. So monthly checks are already a thing passed from this third stimulus check package, albeit it's only for children, or I should say the person who claims the child as a dependent are going to start receiving $250 to $300 per month per child. So if you have two children, $500 per month, it's it's not going to make anybody rich, but it'll help pay for the, the child's food and clothing, maybe a little bit of your rent. I mean, $500 even for two children isn't even going to pay anybody's rent, uh, but it adds up. I mean, $500 a month times 12 months is $6,000 a year. So the good news is, is that Democrats have already passed a form of monthly stimulus checks from the third stimulus check package in these uh, increased child tax credits, and they're sending them out, them out in monthly checks. The other good news is that Democrats want monthly stimulus checks for everybody else who qualifies for a third stimulus check and are pushing for that right now in the Senate. And we have a lot of Democratic support for these monthly stimulus checks, over 80 different lawmakers in the House of Representatives. The U.S. House Ways and Means Committee has urging President Biden and uh, members to pass recurring direct stimulus payments every single month. And um, we have Senator Bernie Sanders, who's the Senate budget chairman, who is largely considered the right-hand man of President Biden, and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, 
who's the leader of the Senate, are both in favor of monthly recurring stimulus checks to be included in the next infrastructure package or the next stimulus package or possibly combined as one. So I will keep you up to date with everything stimulus related, what's going on in Washington, D.C., um, breaking news that we need to know about and we will discuss here on this channel. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. Remember, new videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. After subscribing, which is free to do, you can click the bell icon to all notifications to get reminder notifications when we go live with new videos. I just had two crucial videos that you should watch if you haven't yet. You can click on this video to see all the new state uh, stimulus checks, county stimulus checks, and other stimulus programs going on right now. There's dozens of them. And this is my newest update about President Biden's Social Security raise so click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.